This recording will walk you through doing the sample exam for exam one using SPSS. So I've brought my data into my data from Excel into SPSS. Um, when I did this, it somehow managed to truncate the decimals. So what I will do is make sure that you are actually given two data files for your exam, one in Excel and one in SPSS, so you don't have to bring that over. So your results here will be a little bit different than what you saw using Excel because obviously everything has been rounded up here. There are no decimal points involved. Okay, so we're going to start off with question number one. Describe first semester junior performance. So we'll compute the descriptive statistics for our variable. I'll go into Analyze and then Descriptive Statistics. Select Descriptives. And I want this information for first semester junior GPA. So I'll select that variable. Under Options, I'll select Mean, Standard Deviation, Variance, and I might also like the range, and click Continue and then OK. So here are my descriptive statistics. My mean junior GPA is 2.48 with a standard deviation of 0.641 um, and I have 250 observations of that. Now to go back to my data view, I click down here and go into my data set and it will transfer me back to seeing the data set there. Identify and interpret the mean and the 95% confidence interval. So we already talked about the mean. Um, to get the 95% confidence interval, I will go into Analyze, then Compare Means, One Sample T-Test. I will perform that one sample T-Test on first semester junior GPA with a hypothesized value of zero go in here into options and it gives me the confidence interval of percentage as 95. I click continue and click OK. So I get my 95 percent confidence interval there. So the average for semester junior GPA is 2.48. I'm 95 percent confident that first semester junior GPA average is between 2.4 and 2.56. Then I'm asked to construct a histogram. If I go back into Analyze, this time under Descriptive Statistics, select Frequencies, select my variable as first semester junior GPA, then select Charts. I can click right here on Histogram and it will show the histogram for me. Click Continue and click OK and that histogram is printed out for me right there and it again shows the mean of 2.48 standard deviation of 0 0.641 and 250 observations. I'm then asked in question two it stated that you believe first the average first semester junior GPA is significantly different or significantly greater than 2.4 so you think it's greater than 2.4 now the logic in performing this test is a little bit different. So normally I say I think it's greater than 2.4 so HA is greater than 2.4 so HO is less than 2.4. Okay, all of that is still the same. Now the question of how to conduct this is a little bit different. So let me show you. I'll go back into Analyze and then Compare Means One Sample T-Test. I'm still looking at first semester junior GPA and I will change my test value to 2.4 and click OK. So this gives me a test default HO um, first semester junior GPA equals 2.4 and I'm right at that reject do not reject at the 95% confidence interval because my p-value is 0.05. So you know, I, I would say no, I really can't reject it at the 95% confidence interval. But what I want to talk about here is the logic of um, how to go through this. Now, we can say, you know, we know normally HO is less than, so you look at p-value upper tail, but there is no p-value upper tail to look at here. All you have is that p-value two tail. So ask yourself, 
What do I do with that? If we want to test for a positive impact and T is positive, then take that p-value and divide by 2. I believe first semester junior GPA is greater than 2.4, so that's testing a positive impact, so I can take that 0.05 and divide by 2. Another way of thinking about it is if HO is less than or equal to 2.4, then my rejection region is in the upper tail. If my rejection region is in the upper tail and my T value is also positive, as in upper tail, then I take the p-value and divide by 2. If, however, there was a mismatch, it would take the p-value and divide, or take 1 minus the p-value and divide it by 2. So here I just look at this 0.05. I'm testing HO as a negative impact, and T is positive. So I'm looking at the upper tail, so I do, in fact, have a match. So I'll divide that 0.05 by 2. So I get... 0 0.025, which is less than 0 0.05, so I would reject HO and conclude that first semester junior GPA is significantly greater than 2.4. Now, notice this is going to be a, a little bit different from what we saw before in the Excel because this time we actually have decimal or we don't have decimals involved in here. Um, okay, so continuing on, I'm actually going to jump now to question number four, because question number three takes a little bit more finagling um, in what I need to do with my data. So I'm going to go back into analyze. Now here I'm asked, maybe advanced math ability is all that really matters. Regress student performance in math 119 against first semester junior GPA. So I'll go into regression, select linear regression. Since I believe only Math 119 performance matters, I believe performance in Math 119 predicts first semester junior GPA. So my independent variable is performance in Math 119. My dependent variable is first semester junior GPA. And I will go now... Uh, this will just give me the regular regression. I don't have to do anything. I could just click OK and I would get my regression. But I also know that I will want to um, test to see, or test, sorry. I, I also know that I want to create a 95% confidence interval for the predicted first semester junior GPA for a student with performance in math 119 of 2.9. So what I'm going to do, instead of having to go through the whole predictive and confidence interval thing like I do in Excel, I could just go here into Save. Under Predicted Value, select Unstandardized. And then under Predictive Interval, select Mean and Individual. Click Continue down here. And then under Options here. No, I don't want to select anything there. OK and I will select OK. So it gives me my output. Um, I can state my regression equation. I can go down here to get my in the coefficients area to get my actual regression equation. So beta 0 is 1.893 and beta of math 119 is 1.82. So state my regression equation. First semester junior GPA equals 1.893 plus 1.82 Math 119. Is it a good predictor? Uh, well, since this is a simple regression, I could just look at my R squared, which says, you know, roughly 50% of the variation in first semester junior GPA is explained by performance in Math 119. So it's not great, but it's not horrible. Interpret the beta of Math 119. So going back down here to my beta, for every one grade increase in performance in math 119 first semester junior GPA is expected to increase by 0.182 then I want to know uh, does performance in math 119 have a positive impact on first semester junior GPA I want to test for a positive impact and my T is positive so I take that p-value that significance there and divide by 2 and Obviously, 0 divided by 2 is still going to be 0, so I would reject HO 
and I would conclude that performance in Math 119 does have a positive impact on first semester junior GPA. Then I can go back into my data and I'll see that it added all of this new stuff. This first section are my actual predicted Y's. So if performance in Math 119 is 2, then um, first semester junior GPA predicted is 2.2567. So those are my predictions given there. Next come my uh, predictive intervals and then my confidence intervals. So that information is actually given. Now because the decimals didn't upload to test for 2.9 is actually a little bit difficult. So um, I can't in fact do that. I could test for if it was 2 or if it was 3. I can't exactly do 2.9. So I would make sure on the actual exam um, you're given something that you can clearly test for and it would be one of the actual observations. So it would be nice and simple for you there. Okay, going back um, to question number three, we want to test is there a statistically significant difference between performance in Math 118 and 119. In order to do this, I have to create a new variable. So I'm going to start off with my Math 118 data. I'm just going to highlight all of that and copy it. Oops, sorry. Wait, hold on, go all the way back up to the top. Just Math 118 data. I want to highlight and copy. Control C to copy that. Bring it over here. Scroll back up and Control V. And I am going to label this first because it's the first math class. I'm going to copy that. Highlight all of my new places. Okay, control V to paste that in there. Now I'm doing this because there is no simple way to just compare two columns of data. You actually have to create a third column of them combined and then a fourth column of them delineating which of the two columns you're looking at. It seems a little complicated now, but when I run through the test, it'll actually make sense. So under that first section. I'm now going to copy in performance in Math 119. So highlighting all of the Math 119 observations. All the way up to the top. Okay. Okay. And I will paste them down here. And I will label all of these second. Okay, S-E-C-O-N, because it's not letting me write second. I don't know what's going on. Okay, now I'll go into Analyze, Compare Means, Independent Samples T-Test. My new variable is variable 001. That's my test variable. My grouping variable is variable 002. I could go back in and rename them, but I don't really need to. And I need to define groups. So say 
which sections of this new variable are, are performance in math 118 and which sections are performance in math 119. So first is my first group variable and S-E-C-O-N is my second. Click continue. Under options, all of that is fine. Click continue and then click OK. And it does two t-tests, one assuming equal variances and one assuming unequal variances. So HO was performance is equal, HA performance is not equal. So if I look at this p-value two tail, I'm going to look at the unequal variances or equal variances not assumed. P-value is 0 0.042, it's less than 0 0.05, so I would reject HO and conclude that performance is not equal across the two classes.